So, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the self Development with Tactics podcast. Um, today, again, without a video, I, I kind of like the the concept of having one video with video and one video without. Um, yeah, of course, it's always a bit easy for me and it's definitely saving time. But yeah, anyway, today is a very beautiful day. So afterwards, I'm going to go for a hike quite. Um, I think that's going to be a, a little bit of a longer one. I, I prepared a bit of audio material to listen to while doing so. But yeah, we're going to go through some Seth Godin quotes. It might be the case that I've already went through these, but I believe that they are quite amazing. But I think that I'm actually going to go from the bottom to the top to kind of minimize the risk of just hearing the same things <laughs> that I've heard. Um, but yeah, anyways, I don't remember any of these anyway, so in the end, it's, it's going to be worth it anyway, you know. But yeah, the 92nd, there's actually 92 quotes here. So, you have everything you need to build something far bigger than yourself. And I would definitely say this as well. I mean, your mind is powerful. And I mean, I've been talking about it the last few days, but I don't know. I, I really do want to point it out. Like, it is insane what you can do with your mind and, and only with your mind. It's, it's so powerful. It, it's, it's amazing. The next one, when exactly were you brainwashed into believing that the best way to earn a living is to have a job? Which is definitely the case, I guess. I mean, there is jobs that are, or there are jobs that are that are paying really well, you know. Don't want to be like, oh, you have to be an entrepreneur because the thing is, not everyone is meant to be one, you know. I, for example, I think that I'm not meant to be an entrepreneur. It is just not something that I am. Um... I'm more or less either an athlete or an artist, but I think that I'm not an entrepreneur. Um, but of course, I don't want to limit myself by my thoughts. So we're going to see. We're going to see what my life is going to show me. We're going to see what my life is going to be like in uh, um, the long run. But definitely, yeah. I mean, if you're having your own company, if you're doing your own stuff, you're probably going to make better money. But it's not about the money anyway. So yeah. Try is the opposite of hiding. So try. The secret to being wrong isn't to avoid being wrong. The secret is being willing to be wrong. The secret is realizing that wrong isn't fatal, Seth Gordon. Yeah, it's not. Definitely not. The most successful givers aren't doing it because they are being told to. They do it because doing it is fun. It gives them joy. And giving is an incredible thing. You know, you're going to feel good about yourself. You are probably doing something good for other people, and so on and so on. It is amazing. The cost of being wrong is less than the cost of doing nothing. Yeah, you know, because the the cost of doing nothing is eternal regret. The cost of being wrong is learning something. So there's actually no cost at all. I mean, you're getting paid something, you know, you're gaining something. You, You receive something for being wrong. Soon is not good is not as good as now, so do it now, which is, you know, people that are willing to do something, and this is also one of the reasons why I I truly hate New Year's resolutions, today is the 31st of of December, so tomorrow is going to be the next year, and I'm actually, well, um, I don't necessarily like these occasions, because I, I feel the urge of, of really maximizing the next year, even though I know that it is quite going to be the same thing as as, as this year. Quite, of course, I hope there's going to be some 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 different things regarding COVID and whatnot, or some changes and improvements regarding that. But in terms of my work ethic, in terms of the things that I do, um, I mean, it is fluctuating quite a lot. It's it's you know, I I just do my shit. You know, whatever happens, I do my shit. So in the end, it is quite like, yeah, um, a fear that is unnecessary in my head, so to speak. But yeah. Um, Quit or be exceptional. Average is for losers. Yeah, don't be average. Don't do things on an average level. Doesn't make any sense, you know, because people are searching for something that is not average. Unless you know that your people are average and they are searching for something average. But most often we are not. You know, we either want to have the cheap thing, 
Well, hmm. not necessarily. I think it really depends on who you're talking to, you know. And what I mean by saying that is your clients, your customers, and whoever you're trying to to serve with your product, your service, and whatnot. If they want to have something average, you know, with an average price, an average whatever, then I guess that you should, you know, give something average to them. But most often we're not searching for something average. You know, anyway, when people come together into common worldviews and your job is to find a previously undiscovered clump and frame a story for those people, which is, you know, definitely about marketing there. Low price is a great way to sell a commodity. That is not marketing, though. That's efficiency. Yeah. Even though price has something to do with marketing, um, the last thing people should be doing and or are doing is lowering the price. You know, it's kind of the last thing you can do quite or maybe should do. I mean, of course, uh, some people or for some people, it's going to be the first thing they do. But but in the end, like this is not the greatest race to, to be part of, you know, because somebody's always going to be able to be even lower in price, especially when you are an entrepreneur, when you're having a small business and you maybe have competitors that are way bigger than you are. If it is about the price, nah, don't play that game because they are probably able to, to lower the price way more than you're doing that. And well, maybe they're also going to do so because they know that you can't and therefore you're going to not um, for such a long time be part of the whole race there. And they know that. It's better to make a decision, even the wrong one, than to be in limbo. Yeah. <laughs> um, even I mean... If you think about it and if you imagine it, it's, let's put it like that, and being in a state of limbo, like like under the bar, it, trying to, to balance shit out is not a great spot to be in. <laughs> it really is not. But making a decision and then, you know, just doing that. But, but also, I mean, if you're making a decision, that doesn't mean that you, for the rest of your life, have to, to act on that decision. You can just change your mind. Guess what? You can reverse the whole thing if you can. Of course, you know, there's there's some elements of life where things are not as easy to be reversed as, as regarding some other things. But, uh, but yeah, um, let's see. If your organization requires success before commitment, it will never have either. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you gotta have to be committed. And you gotta have to just work. And I mean, it is the exact same thing that I'm seeing for the podcast. I mean, numbers are going up and I'm extremely fucking happy about that. But I just do it nevertheless, you know, whether the numbers are going up or they're going down. It is something that I've started and it's something that I'm gonna do for quite a while, I guess. Because it's quite a lot of fun for me. And I've also seen that it is a medium for me to express myself and express my feelings and... And... and clarify and, and clear up my mind and my thinking because I mean I'm no god I'm not uh, whatever but I you know do f do often have negative thoughts and I can solve these thoughts I can solve these 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 wrong thoughts you know these wrong thought patterns quite as well by by talking about them and then well you know somehow realizing that <laughs> whatever is on my mind is actually not true and it's actually wrong. But yeah, if you are deliberately trying to create a future that feels safe, you will willfully ignore the future that is likely. I mean, as you can see by going through these 12 quotes there, he's definitely not a, he's definitely not playing it safe. And um, I, well, since I do also have some background knowledge, I mean, I think he said, well, I, I hope that I'm not wrong there, but I think he said that he uh, got bankrupt quite a few times. I think three, four times or something like that. But but in the end, everything played out quite well because he, he really, yeah, he really was going for it. You know, he really wanted to do something and he, he put his money into the things that he thought are, are going to work. And sometimes they worked and sometimes they, they didn't work. And um, yeah, there's been a lot of hardship in his life as well in terms of 
um, success and failure, or more or less failure. But yeah, I define anxiety as experiencing failure in advance, and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> if you if you think about it in that way, like it is one of the dumbest things you 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 can have on your mind. Like why? There is, I mean, of course, there is some some perceptions and um, or there are quite some perceptions and there and they probably also having some experience. You know, it obviously depends on whatever you're doing. But 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 why do we expect failure? Why? You know, even though I mean. Yeah, we have experience and we might have done the same thing before and whatnot, but expecting failure, like, hmm. Don't try to make a product for everybody because that is a product for nobody. And this is the same thing as if you're making a product or if you're producing a product that everyone likes, then you're producing a product that nobody loves. And this is not the way to go because... I mean, if it is liked by everybody, it is like, yeah, <laughs> no, nobody in the end really gives a fuck about it. But if it is something that some people love and need, therefore, because they love it, they're going to buy it, you know, and they're going to spread the message of this product that is amazing because they love it. Love is a really fucking strong emotion if you think about it. You don't think about these items, these products, these whatever that you love and maybe even can't live without, you know. And if you're producing something like that, the word is going to spread, you know, people are going to talk about it. And, and in the end, out of this really small group of people, you know, you get a really big audience because most often it starts with a really, really, really small amount of people, you know, as it did with Facebook. Facebook was initially um, made, quote unquote, for, uh, I think, college students or university students or something like that. But in the end, um, yeah. People loved them and people spread, spread it, sp spread, whatever, the word. And then in the end, a lot of people are using it. Being aware of your fear is smart. Overcoming it is the mark of a successful person. As new forms of media develop and clutter becomes even more intense, it's the asset of permission that will generate profits for marketers. You don't have to settle. It's a choice you get to make every day. We have greatly exaggerated the risk of sinking without celebrating the value of swimming. Today, most marketers don't notice, track, or intact. Whoa, I'm sorry. Today, most marketers don't notice, track, or interact with people until they are consumers. <laughs> I think this is quite the case, but I guess that with social media, things changed a bit. You know. Um, what do you call the customer acquisition? I think it's called. Um, I think got 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 easier, I guess. You know, since you're able to to talk to way more people, way quicker, um, in way less time, and also probably way more efficiently, since you you know who you're talking to, um, which is not necessarily the case with. You know, ads in in, in newspapers and magazines. Of course, you know these people that are. Um, that are reading the newspapers and whatnot. But I mean, if you think about social media and the abilities that the internet gave you, it is insane. You know quite everything about a person. You know um, if they're married or not, you know their their interests, you know what, what they have liked previously, you know uh, where they are coming from, like everything. It, it is insane. And um, I mean, yeah, marketers have been using it relatively effectively, I would say. But yeah. The secret of leadership is simple. Do what you believe in, paint a picture of the future, go there and people will follow. Um, isn't it leading by example or something? You know, some other... Uh, um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. But, but I would say this as well, like, why would I follow somebody that is not doing what he or she is saying? Even though, like, it is a difficult thing. I mean, if you think about fitness coaches or, or bodybuilding coaches or whatever, um, you know, whatever you're having in mind, uh, like something in that space, then does it really make sense to choose a coach that is in really good shape in terms of expecting that you're also going to get into the, into, into the same shape 
when you are working with this person, with this coach, with this trainer. I mean, to some degree, it makes sense that, that we assume that, but but yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the case. You know, it, it really does not. Because of course, I mean, this coach might be on, um, I don't know, human growth hormone. This Did I say teacher? The coach might be um, on steroids, you know, it might be on SARMs, whatever. Um, yeah, so it, it's really difficult. But on the other hand, it is also difficult to um, to have faith in, in people that seemingly do not do what they are telling you to do. Does that make sense? The job isn't to catch up to the status quo. The job is to invent the status quo or status quo, whatever. The challenge, it turns out, isn't in perfecting your ability to know when to start and when to stand by. The challenge is to getting into the habit of starting. Starting something new. I, by the way, do have the feeling of starting something new and, and, and making something new. You know, it might be a podcast about health and fitness and all of these things that I'm, that I'm, I don't know, thinking about and talking about. But it might also, on the other hand, be something that's maybe a bit more produced. Like, um, the podcast is... Well, I don't want to say that it is low in quality. I mean, regarding the information and all the things that I'm that I'm talking about, there's definitely going to be something for somebody. But yeah, you know, but but it might not might not be as easy to be consumed as I would first of all like it to be, and as it could be. But yeah, sometimes we spend more time than we should defending the old thing instead of working to take advantage of the new thing. Yeah. Definitely, like okay, you no, know, let's use use yet let's use newspapers, you know, because we've always done that, you know. Every time when somebody says like okay, because we've always done that, just don't listen because it's bullshit, you know. Why would you? Why would you be doing something just because, you know, the 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 singular reason of doing something just because you've always done that? Why? What's the benefit of that? Now, of course. I mean, if it is tested and, and, and whatnot for millions of years, then it, yeah, it works. And we know that it works. But on the other hand, are you really sure that there isn't a better way to, to do whatever you are trying to do or to do whatever you're doing? Because that probably is. And I think there is. But yeah. Um, three last quotes. Or oh, let's go through... Yeah, let's go through the whole thing. Powerful advertising is anticipated, personal, and relevant. One way to think about running a successful business is to figure out what the least you can do and do that. Little thoughts and ephemeral, they come and inevitably they go. We don't remember them an hour later, never mind a week or a month later. Is it any wonder we teach this mindset? Factories and managers don't want spunk or even innovation. They generally seek compliance. We rely on the disobedient few for innovation. But today, innovation is our only option. If you are brilliant and discover or undiscover and, un and underappreciate, then you're being too generous and about your definition of brilliant. What? If you're brilliant and undiscover and underappreciated, then you're being too generous about your definition of brilliant. <laughs> well, yeah. And I'll... Hmm. I think it is amazing the mix of, okay, believe in yourself and just don't believe too much in yourself and, and all be maybe arrogant. If religion compromises rules you follow, faith is demonstrated by the actions you take. How dare you settle for less when the world is made it How dare you settle for less when the world has made it so easy for you to be remarkable? And the last one, don't try to be the next, instead try to be the other, the changer, the new. And yeah, with that being said, I'm I'm hopefully gonna see you the next time. So uh please take care of yourself, have a good new year. And, and yeah, stay healthy, man. Stay, stay healthy. And women, man, and women, and everybody. Stay healthy. Think about the people that you love. And also think about what you 
could be doing better and what you could make and what you could change. Because we all can. You know, obviously, we all are not going to be the new Elon Musk, but we all can be something, something even big. You know, depends on the definition of big, of course, but, but we all can. We all can be someone and or something big. And we all should try. And with that being said, and hopefully you're going to see you next time. Thank you very much for the bottom of my heart for this great year. And yeah, going to see you next time. So, so bye-bye.